A building's configuration and its irregularities can have a significant effect on how it responds to seismic loads during an earthquake. Regular configurations, such as square and rectangular shapes, are comparatively more resistant to seismic loads than irregular configurations like U, L, plus, and T shapes. ASCE 716 defines existence of reentrant corner irregularity, when both plan projections of the structure beyond a reentrant corner, are greater than 15% of the plan dimensions of the structure in the given direction. The code highlights its applicability in seismic design category D, E, and F. Reentrant corners tend to concentrate seismic loads and potentially cause damage or failure of buildings. One of the common stress concentration zones can be seen in the video at the joint of both wings of the structure. Both wings of the same structure tend to respond differently under lateral loads. Building plans with this irregularity generally tend to have larger displacement, story drift, and time period. Now, let's find out if reentrant corner irregularity exists in following examples. In X and Y directions, the total lengths are 64 and 32 feet respectively. The projection length is 16 feet in each direction. The calculations show that the irregularity exists in both directions. This next example has a L-type building configuration. The irregularity percentages are 60% and 50% respectively, in each direction. As re-entrant corner irregularity exists in both examples, the section 12.3.3.4 of ASCE 716 suggests to increase the diaphragm forces by 25% during diaphragm design. Applicable to diaphragm and vertical element, or diaphragm and collector connection, as well as, collectors to vertical element, so that the dissipation or transfer of forces among elements is within shear and tension capacity of the diaphragm. Note that beams, or zones of reinforcement in diaphragm, are generally considered as collection connections.